especially for females. Uh, we need more female yes. directors. <laughs> Absolutely, and more female content. Not chick flicks. No. Yours is not a chick flick. Can you imagine the old broads? My TV show is called Old Broads, so it, I just can't imagine us doing that kind of stuff. But. Anybody else? Oh no! Okay. We can share. Okay. <laughs> Fairly young. I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna throw this out there. I'm 19. So, <laughs> woo! Um, my passion for this kind of just comes from growing up as media was booming and constantly becoming more and more popular. I, I. I wasn't much of a social media person, more over like a TV and film kind of person. So whenever I went to school and kind of found that I liked doing special effects work, I just kind of started putting my focus in that and I thought this was a really fun opportunity to kind of put my name on something that I felt was going to be an awesome opportunity for everyone that was involved. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I'll answer that too. Um, I think what inspired me to become an actress first off was I grew up watching movies with my pops. Pops, raise your hand. He was in the film. So actually, the main bad guy that you guys saw, that's my pops. I killed my pops in my movie, guys. <laughs> He's a great bad guy. I don't know guy. how y'all feel about that. But. You are a great bad guy, by the way. I was actually, okay. good. like, I was very shook when I saw him. Um, like, for the first time in the, in, the, in the main lobby, I saw him, and I kind of jumped for a second. I was like, oh. <laughs> He's not as mean as he looks, I swear. No, but I, I grew up uh, watching movies with my pops, all kinds of movies that my mom probably didn't want me watching. So, probably the bloody stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, I watched a bunch of movies, and uh, at first I didn't really know that they were fake. I didn't understand that concept because I was really young. And he was like, no, these people are actors, and they make this stuff. And I was like, what, really? And uh, that I don't think that really sparked until I was around 12. And I was like, you know, I wanted to be so many different things. I wanted to be a fisherman. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a martial artist. I wanted to be all these ballerina. I wanted to be, I wanted to be all these things. But, you know, what's the thing that you can, you know, mesh it all into? And that's, that's acting. And uh, from there, I kind of fell in love with it. And I begged my mom to take me to acting class. And I remember crying on the phone, being like, Mom, please take me. And she, you know, I have the most supportive family, and they took me. And uh, it's just been a journey since then. And as far as filmmaking, you know, I told you guys a little bit about that. It's, you know, paving my own way rather than uh, having somebody say yes. I want to say yes to myself. So. Yeah. Um, next question. Who are the people that inspire you to become a filmmaker or an artist? Who inspired uh, me to be a filmmaker and artist? Yes. Uh, I, uh, I'm the OG guy here, and when I say OG, it's called the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the only guy on this particular thing. So uh, what inspired me? When I was little, uh, I'd say probably uh, seven, eight, nine, I saw a show by Leonard Nimoy called Lights, Camera, Action. It was behind the scenes, uh, like the, the, second, uh, uh, the second video you saw. I gave uh, a great... Uh, look into the process. Now, when I actually got on set and discovered how hard the work was and, and the waiting and the process, um, I still embraced it as, as an artist. I, I started out as a traditional artist, uh, pencil, pen, and ink, uh, painting, uh, sculpture, stuff like that. Moved into photography, moved into uh, film, and I still love the process. It is a very, very hard work. And when we did this particular shoot it was a solid 17 hours and you know it, it is a really tough process um and th there is there is an amazing uh, set of, of family and actors that, that actually uh, stepped up and, and you have to we can never really uh do it justice unless you were there on set and that's one thing uh that people don't get to see and that's what I, that's what i value most i'm the i'm the nerd who actually watches the behind the scenes stuff before i actually watch the movie because I want to see how much hard work they put into it. And what inspired me to get into it, not only was the artistry, but it was it was the hard work. When I actually got a taste of that, I was like, uh, I'm going to run away. You know, and then actually I, I came back to it, and 
and you know, you actually can shake out interns and students and people who actually, oh, they're, they're, they are actually uh, uh, romanticized by the work that we do. It is, it is nowhere near romantic. You're spending uh, a minimum of 12 hours on set, uh, 30 minute lunch, and you're standing most of the time. It is not easy work. You have to have a passion for it, and and it's it's a, a fantastic uh, justification when the people that are that are the, the butts that are in the seats out there, uh, the general public, uh, when you see responses, emotional responses. That's most important. When you make somebody move emotionally, uh, that that payoff really really touches yourself emotionally, mentally, intellectually, and artistically. And I can't speak. Uh, about the payoff that that gives you as an artist in this particular field. There you have it. Nice. Well, yes. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, who were the people that inspired you to become a filmmaker or an artist? Okay, so. One of mine is Andy Warhol, not necessarily because of his artwork, because like if we're honest, what he did was kind of you know conventional, but he still had the idea. And what inspired me about him though is that he made being an artist cool. He made being an artist like you know possible for you to be up there with big A-list celebrity names and you having an image and people actually caring about art, even like I said, <laughs> not the most original artwork, but. Um, I definitely think that that's cool. Um, I feel like artists throughout history haven't really meant anything until after they they were dead and <laughs> weren't able to enjoy, you know, even feeling like a celebrity or even feeling like the appreciation for their work. So I think it's really cool, um, especially now in the age of Instagram and social media, to be able to be an artist that rubs elbows with really cool people like filmmakers, um, you know, because I'm just a photographer, like, I don't even know, like, how am I up here? All these people are so cool, you know, it's just like, ah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the beauty of it. That's the power of social media. And I just, I think it's cool that people like him, you know, really open the door for artists to actually be considered cool people in society and people pay money to come see you and stuff. So, yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Anybody else? Um, I have a lot of movies that have inspired me. Um, I'm one of those people that watches the same movie like over and over and over and they're like, oh, have you seen this? I'm like, no. Have, have seen, no. I'm like, I've seen Terrence Malick, I've seen Tree of Life like a hundred times and Nacho Libre 4,000 times and, um, you know, Amelie a million times and all those movies and those are the movies that really inspire me where they really pull you out of where you are and you forget you're watching a movie and you really start to feel you know, inspired or passionate again, or, you know, like you you can love somebody. Those movies that really like go down deep and you're like, God, I can do it. I can, you know, I'm gonna make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what inspires me. And lots of musicals too. Musicals really inspire me. Frozen, I'm like, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, um, what have been some of the challenges in the industry for you guys? Oh my gosh, okay, so I'm, it's, it's learning your craft. It's understanding what you need to do to get your, your message and your point across, and no matter what you're doing. Like, I'm sure you put a lot of work into embracing a character that is not, I swear to God, I can't look at her and see the same person that was on that screen. It freaks me out. You know, I'm, Jason's been doing this for 10,000 years, oh, so <laughs> it's you, Got him. It's, it's breaking yourself into that industry and proving to these people that have been doing it for so long that you know what you're doing. And <laughs> that's something that I should struggle with personally, because like, I swear, I, I, I know, I can, concept, I can conceptually tell you anything about my crap, but I still am practicing and I'm still learning. But that's part of the process. You never stop learning. And you're never going to stop. As, as long as you love what you do, you should never stop. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started, I mean, I'm so loud, I feel. Um, I started out as a PA, 
which is like the lowest job you can be on a movie set. And it's I like, still PA. you still PA? You go, girl. I mean, um, it, it could be fun if you. Heck yeah. You know, uh, well, I wasn't super pumped about it, but it's all good. Um, and um, Rachel, the girl that plays Molly, the blonde in Molly and Pip, she's an actress and she's in New York City. And basically, one day we were like talking about all the, you know, crazy stories about me being a PA. And then I discovered that actresses in New York are like, it's even worse. I was like, oh gosh, like, <laughs> like, they also have it bad. Like, if you're in a theater show, like some really bad theaters, they'll make you act and then they'll make you clean the theater. And then like one time she told me they had to clean out like a shed. I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, sometimes you do all these ridiculous things because you really love your craft and you won't say no because you really just, you know, you want to go out there and, and, and make something. And in the beginning when I started, people would always ask you like, oh, what do you want to be like in this industry? And everyone's like, oh, I want to be like a DP, I want to be a gaffer, I want to be, I don't know, hair and makeup. And then they'd ask me, and I'd be like, oh, I want to be a director. And they'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, that's really, like, you're not going to make it. Basically, that's what they're saying is like, oh, you're never going to make it. Like, good luck. So. Yeah, kind of just pushing through that and learning along the way. Like, it's definitely good. Like, I learned so much being a PA. Like, I know all the, like, secrets and you know what people are talking about because you just kind of get to listen because everyone's kind of ignoring you and you're like oh I'm eavesdropping on all this like great information and learning everything so it's like I guess wherever you are in that moment just learn and then we'll figure it out we're all figure it out <laughs> I'd like to actually add to that because um, I still take PA jobs uh, even though I've, I have you know, some decades behind my career uh, I think it's important to really get to the roots and understand what the the new uh, uh, youth, the new vision, the new minds that are coming into the workplace. Uh, and you know, there, there's a lot of times with uh, small films like this and other productions that you're going to do for yourself. You're the producer, director, and, and guess what? You're the janitor, and that's gonna, that's gonna, that's that's reality. Uh, and never lose that humility when you're working on set and you're starting your own production because guess what? If, if there's a job missing, you fill it. And, uh, and, I, and I take uh, PA jobs just to get a, a pulse on the, uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area and who's out there. Who's, and I don't, I don't tell them who I, I mean, I'll tell them what my background is. I'm just the guy that's the old guy that's a PA, <laughs> thinks he wants to be on, on set. I don't, I don't uh, give them my background, but I, I, I still do above and beyond what's expected of me. And you know what, what that is, is you know, having a, a, a good vision, if you like the business and you, you haven't run away just yet, uh, it, really dive in, into this and you, you have to give all of yourself to it. You have, it, it like I said, it's a, it is a passion. And that's one of the things that, uh, even though it's hard work, um, never never think any one job, oh, I'm a DP, I'm never going back to a PA. And that, that's, that's an inaccurate assumption and a perspective. Uh, have that perspective that you'll continue to do all the jobs. And, and what that is is networking and understand, understanding people. This business is not just a technical aspect. Oh, I can pull focus. Oh, I can do art direction. Oh, I can I can put a wardrobe on somebody. The the perspective is it's, it's a people industry. And if you make some great relationships, your career can go farther. And see, I think that's what my challenge is. I think whenever I first tried to get into this, I was really green, like really, really green. I'm not one of those people who had, you know, parents who can, you know, here, here you go, here's an acting job, or I, I didn't have, you know, friends in the industry who was kind of like, I just want to do this thing, and I just started, you know, and uh, you learn from there, you make your mistakes, and I think along the way I made a lot of mistakes working with not quality people, and I think that's where if I were to give any advice to anybody else who's trying to get in the industry is just watch who you're working for because that's your name and that's your brand and it's out there forever. It's out there forever and it, it sucks, but you know, I think that's something I wish somebody told me was don't work with this person because they suck. Um, and that's just, that's how it is. And I think 
um, I'm trying to also uh, kind of bring awareness of the Dallas, you know, there's, there's talented people in Dallas. There are. And I mean, I have a lot sitting with me right now. And uh, I think we kind of get a bad rep because of the fact that we're, in, that we're in Dallas and there's a lot of crap out there right now. Um, so it's, I think my challenges right now is I'm also trying to load a lot on my own plate because of the fact that I don't know a lot of um, people and that's why I'm, I'm, this is actually the first time I'm meeting some of these people up here. So it's, I'm, thank you guys for being here. I'm quite impressed with your film. Thank oh you, goodness. I appreciate I'm it. I'm going to have to incorporate that into old broad somehow. Yeah. Maybe yeah. in a martial arts <laughs> class or something. Yeah. Really but, uh, yeah, this, it's, it's not an, I, I don't know, it's not an easy uh, path to try to go down, but it's fun. And I wouldn't do anything else, so we're going. Um, okay, and last question for just introductions. How can women get their stories told? And I'd like to also hear Jason's perspective on that too, because he's the only male up here. <laughs> I'll do that after some of the ladies uh, give their perspective. So once again, how can women get their stories told? That's right. Make um, it short. <laughs> yeah. I guess we just have to do it ourselves. There's yeah. really like no other way around it. Um, for instance, me like, uh, last month I put together an art show and it was all for women. It was nothing featuring like you were a part of, which was yeah. really cool. It was just to showcase women's photography, uh, models, just different talented women in our community. And when I was trying to get funding for the event, um, I'm also part of this group called DTX Street, which is guys and women. And you know, it's never hard getting funding for those types of events. Like guys and companies will throw down money for that real quick, but. When I presented to them this idea and that it was geared around women and empowering women, I got a lot of emails that were like, oh, we're, we're sorry, it sounds really cool, but uh, unfortunately women are not our market. Or, uh, yeah, it's not really our thing, you know? And that was just really disappointing because, you know, it's the same way, like, I don't have um, a family with financial power or really any kind of power. So I'm kind of on my own in this. And um, I just, you have to just learn how to just take that with a grain of salt, like just kind of just take it in, let it hurt a little bit, and then you just got to keep moving and be like, okay, well, this person didn't work out. And just got to find that motivation to keep trying and keep knocking on other doors because it's hard enough as a human being to get people to believe in you. Um, and I don't, I don't want to sound like we're victimizing or anything, but when you're a woman, it's just that much harder. Um, for some reason, just being a woman, your, you know, your skill qualifications come into question. Like, oh, can you, you know, I'm a photographer. Can you shoot this kind of stuff and not make it look feminine? You know, like, what does that even mean? Like, I shoot <laughs> what I see, and I, I have a, you know, clearly, I'm not gonna edit a wedding photo the same way I would edit a still from a horror movie. You know, like, I mean, so it's just you just have to do it yourself. I feel like and knock on as many doors as you possibly can and you know just be emotional on your own time and don't show anybody else that it hurts because it does yeah I, I totally agree I was raised yeah. in a household of all guys so I think I have a lot of like masculine energy I don't know <laughs> but I think um, when I started just saying yes to myself that's when things started happening for me it a lot of times uh, yeah, it just goes back to people are telling you, no, nah, you can't do that because of this, or you can't uh, be that because you look like this, or you can't, you know, play that certain role because all this, all this, you know, just BS. Um, and as I think women, we just got to say, you know what? Yeah. Yes. Just say yes and just go, you know, just start going and, and don't, take no for an answer from anyone and if a door closes then open another one by yourself find a way yeah or knock it down yeah that's right <laughs> shoot, shoot I, it down. I, yeah <laughs> yeah it's just i don't know it this is life and this is the only one we got to live so yeah just gotta gotta keep going um i agree with you one of the like i it's just been kind of me and my mom, so I've always had a woman in my life to kind of support me in whatever I've done. And just in my personality, I didn't get along with girls anyway, so most of my friends have kind of been guys. And so, it, 
finding like a support group of people or a, just a group of people that can kind of help get you accustomed to the the kind of things you're going to be dealing with kind of it prepares you because you know my like throughout my whole life I've just been huge groups of guys in college guys like there was I went to a like the ratio I, they actually had a statistic there was like for every one like female at my college there was like nine guys so it was a lot and so you find find like a little niche group of people that you can put yourself in and that will support you that won't be like oh you're you're a woman so like we're going to teach you how to do this because we know you're a girl and you're not going to understand like no that's not what you're looking for look for people that are going to teach you and help you and say look i see that you're not understanding so i'm going to explain this to you so you do and then that way we can we can work together on this yeah, <laughs> yeah but just speeding on on that point really quick before you jason um i also think that Finding a good team member is really important and, and just building your team like you guys are my team. And uh, one big person on my team is Jay and he's kind of been behind the scenes and all this trying to keep me <laughs> sane. But yeah, give him a round of applause. He's up here and he's taking pictures of me because I said I wanted some pictures. Um, so he's he's that guy for me. He, he really, yeah, I've never had a better teammate than Jay and I think uh, if you're a go-getter and if uh, you want to go far, uh, you're going to go a lot faster if you have somebody on your team. So I'm really thankful for Jay. Uh, I want you to repeat the question for me. Yes. So the question is, how can women uh, get their stories told? Um, okay. W women empowerment. So I'm actually the opposite of Gabby. Uh, I grew up with, uh, in a broken home divorce with my mom at, at five. And so I had four women uh, actually raising me. So these women were extremely powerful. You know, uh, a bunch of single women and my grandfather, the only male figure that was there, uh, 35 plus year military veteran. So, you know, uh, I got hit if I did something wrong. It was, it was no, there's no conversation. It's like, ah, you know, the, the women actually, uh, I saw them do more strong things than some men in my life over the course of my uh, growing up in formative years. Um, and that, that's something to be said. So that, that actually uh, has given me strength as an only child moving into my career. I've met, I've met some many, many challenges. I've been a problem child in my past, but I've overcome some of those things with uh, some great guidance from very, very strong women. So how do you empower these women? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad. I've been married 16 years. I have a daughter that's 15, a son that is 11. And uh, I am all about empowering women and their vision and their ideas because um, they have a very unique perspective beyond uh, the masculinity. Uh, and that is uh, a, a very unique thing that uh, as a man you can draw in ideas, uh, perceptions, um, and perspectives that normally you don't think about. Uh, and so, you know, if my wife was here, I would say they're right all the time. <laughs> but it's a, again, it's a collaboration of, of uh, the, the male field, female dynamics, and you need to empower uh, these individuals because they, yes, they have great ideas. Yes, I, I, I come from a background that I have some very strong women, and I, I am going to empower my my daughter is an amazing uh, uh, photographer, uh, DP. My son has been. Um, uh, a sound guy since he was four. I have a picture of him with cans on and a whole little boom So uh, it, uh, the production blood runs deep in my family and the support for all of my daughter's uh, friends who are interested in this particular business, whether it's not production uh, or the medical field or an artist or uh, being in business, uh, the empowerment is there. How, how do you empower it? Uh, just by having some interest and listen. Uh, because we all have some very, very simple things that, uh, and actions that you can take by giving uh, of time or giving of resources or giving of uh, your experience that means quite a bit to uh, every single individual that you talk to uh, that is, a, that is a, a female. And that, that's the kind of empowerment that I've, I've had uh, exposed to me and that I continue uh, in my life, and I will, I will continue until the day I die, only because I, I have uh, 
yet, at least in my my family, my blood influence, uh, the, the the females have been very very strong. And, and then, and I appreciate what you're doing. That's why I'm involved with you, and involved with everybody here. And that's why I, I make uh, lifelong uh, friendships. Not just not just a one off. Okay, you know, it's the next job is this, that, and the other. You know, most of my clients uh, that I, I deal with. Yes, they are initial uh, engagement, but uh, I, if they are some really good people, female, male, uh, or, or whatever, uh, they become a lifelong friend. And that, that's the kind of investment you need to make. It's not about uh, turn and burn, okay, next job, next job, next job. It's like, you know, what type of investment can I make into this individual, and how can they make an investment into me? Because, you know, we're always learning. The old guy is still in the picture. We're, we're still learning. And we draw from all of your vision, uh, everybody that, that's, that's in, in front of us right now. And I appreciate you, ladies. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to kind of uh, quickly wrap this up. Uh, and we're going to kind of go a little bit deeper into um, women in film and, and all that good stuff. And uh, then we're going to wrap it up. And hopefully, you guys, if you have any questions, then I'd love to answer them, too. And, and I'm sure everybody up here would as well. Um, but really quick, uh, the reason why, uh, you know, once again, touching back on why I'm making projects like Sugar, one, I uh, am a martial artist before anything. I was born and raised in a dojo, thanks to my pops, and uh, I'm very proud of that. And I think for a long time, because of what was happening in my acting career, uh, you know, being sent out on, you know, local commercial jobs or um, things that I didn't feel attached to, I guess, um, it caused me to fall out of love with acting for a little bit. And I remember talking to my dad and I was like, man, I just don't know what to do. And he was like, well, why don't you just go get your black belt? And I was like, all right, let's do it. So I'm, I'm on that journey as well. And, and along that, I kind of dragged him along in my acting scene, if you guys, as you guys can see. And uh, we've been doing all these little short videos and uh, little acting, uh, little uh, fight scenes and things like that here and there, you know, with all my brothers as well. Although most of the guys that you saw up there uh, too were my brothers. So <laughs> I, I have awesome, awesome family. But um, I think being that, being wanting to enter like the action scene. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Who do you, who is a female martial artist in Hollywood? And then where are they now? We don't see them anymore. They're not as relevant as I think that they should be. And I think that's what sucks. And I think I'm trying to really bring I that agree about. With you. Yeah. I agree. I'm a casting director, so I have a director that I want you to meet. Hey, let's go. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, really quick, I just want to wrap this up by asking everybody here a question one more time. Um, what are your future goals in this industry? We can just go down the line. Sure, all right. Uh, number one, uh, future goals uh, is to continue the storytelling process and hone my craft. Uh, like I said, we're always learning from other individuals, no matter what their age is, from the, the guy who steps off uh, as a, a high school graduate to a PhD. And there's always something to be learned. And never, ever have your ego on your sleeve. You, you've got to be able to, to witness and understand the fact that you will learn something from everybody that's around you. And um, the ladies, it's the most important. Uh, and make yourself uncomfortable. That, that's one of my favorite things is put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Uh, step into a fear factor. You know, you, know you, you probably heard that from Tim Robbins or some other, other, you know, other guys that uh, are, are, you know, these, these uh, promotional uh, self-improvement type of guys. But... It, it really is true. Uh, step into something that's uncomfortable and uh, work your way forward and find out what you can be and always learn. Uh, that's my thing. I, I'm, a, I'm a big nerd. I love to keep learning, learning, learning. This is kind of a loaded question. <laughs> um, I, my main focus right now is to just 
learn what I need to to get where I want to be. Now, that end goal is shrouded in darkness right now, 